Hello, the practitioner here. Bachelor of Science student, chemistry major, mathematics minor, magician, parapsych researcher, technical skeptic and for, uh, technical agnostic and Fortean skeptic. Um, I've been doing some thinking uh, over my whole um, last slew of uh, videos pertaining to uh, popular arguments and skepticism, and why it's not necessarily uh, been, hel uh, been healthy or helpful. Well, you know, uh, one more I'm going to add on to the list is the fact that um, again, when uh, on the popular level, um, actual scientific data on both proponent and skeptic sides of this is, has not been discussed, um, you know, there's not really any way for scientific progress to continue from here um, if, we, you know, if we keep impeding it. And I'm going to give you an analogy which I think would be very helpful when it, can, uh, when it comes to trying to deal with skepticism. Uh, in the original novel, I Am Legend by Richard Matheson, um, Robert Neville was a guy who was trying to survive uh, in uh, the then future 1970s, surrounded entirely by vampires. Um, the thing is, what's interesting is that um, when he finally actually got himself secure and everything, uh, in order to prevent himself from going insane, he actually started trying to experiment to figure out what was causing the, the virus or gene around him. And um, he at first was thinking of con uh, he at first refused to contemplate vampires because they were a fiction and not of anything. And he was going along with what was the uh, most leading theory of the time before uh, people died, um, which was the, G the germ theory, that some germ was infesting people and causing them, to, uh, causing them to take the blood out of other people. And loudly to their deaths, they, um, some scientists were still proclaiming the gene theory, gene th uh, germ theory and that it could be cured. Well, Robert Neville, after uh, kept he kept trying to look uh, for germs in the, you know, in the bloodstream and the like, but he got limited as to what he could actually do with this uh, theory, you know, like looking at the standard medical textbooks of the day. And, then he, uh, and he, he actually did something that was considered brash, but actually that, that even that very initial brash acceptance and then trying to research mechanisms proved that the, uh, that the original legend of the vampire was in fact just that a legend based on some real facts that had just been extrapolated from. And um, uh, I'll give you an example. He, um, he said, and I quote, why not the germ theory and the why not the germ and the vampire theory together? One doesn't necessarily exclude the other, the same happens, uh, and then he went on to uh, test vampires, you know, stake them not only in the heart but in various different parts of the area, uh, of the body. Uh, discovered that staking them anywhere was effective as long as you expose the germ of, uh, which, you know, caused the vampires to be there the way they were. Uh, as long as you expose it to oxygen, that would destroy the host as well and destroy the virus. Um, if you expose it to ultraviolet light, it was probably the most sensitive, which meant that ultraviolet light would boil the, uh, would basically boil the germ alive in the bloodstream, uh, and the vampire would automatically turn into dust. If the vampire didn't get blood, the uh, germ would consume the host, and the host would turn into dust. Um, and then, you know, it would spore off and wait for new conditions, you know, wait for a new, uh, wait for a new uh, host to walk by, reinfest it, and, you know, Bob's your uncle. It could be airborne to start off with, and then, you know, it would bite others, and, you know, could either transfer through bites or sucking off the blood entirely. Uh, sucking off the blood entirely would uh, kill the host. Uh, just biting them or even transfer through airborne um, would cause the blood, the germ to stay in the bloodstream. Um, as for the invulnerability, um, what the uh, germ would do is it would emit a can um, you know as it multiplied it would emit a certain uh, um, it would create a certain chemical which would act as a, a binding agent hyper gluing the uh, body together thus it would be resistant to bullets because uh, what would happen is that uh, it would instantly heal up any wound you know like the germ would instantly go and try to heal up the physical wound of the body just to make sure that the that the uh, that the uh, the bo uh, body would not as host would not die but if you staked it um, you know it would not it would be unable to reform itself around the stake and then of course you know the oxygen exposition would kill it. Um, you know, um, garlic, um, uh, grounded in rel relatively simple enough science, um, at least as Richard Matheson put it in his science fiction, um, what would happen is that the, um, since the germ is trying to use the full senses of its host to locate others who have uh, fresh blood to tap, uh, you, know, to smell, uh, you know, to smell other life forms and blood around, um, what would happen is that the, the senses of a vampire would be heightened naturally anyway, so the germ would not get affected by the uh, by the garlic smell, but the host would, and it would send them freaking uh, uh, insane. Uh, it would send them freaking you know revolt you know revolting because it's a sensory overload. Um, and that actually that particular aspect may be based in somewhat in science. I mean, we know from those of us with autistic spectrum disorders that. Um, we do get certain periods of heightened sensitivity, uh, heightened sense of smell, heightened sense of hearing, heightened sense of touch. Uh, occasionally, certain wavelengths of light will, um, you know, certain, you know, times light will be too intense for us to handle. Like, you know, there, uh, and no, does this make us vampires? No. But the point is that there is, you know, there might be basis for some of this. Uh, another one is that we know that ultraviolet light does kill bacteria. It might not be too uh, uh, far-fetched 
to assume a, um, you know, a bacteria that could be killed by ultraviolet light right in the bloodstream if it was really, really sensitive. Now, I'm not giving a point for the existence of vampires. This was a fictional story. But the point was, was that in the fictional story, uh, Robert Neville was able to discover the secrets of the vampires and that they were real, um, you know, but not just the fact that they were real, but what they actually were. And that's the issue of where we should be approaching parapsychology and telekinesis right now. Um, you know, an article was published in Scientific American a while back where somebody theorized that possibly the, uh, the, the, the uh, abilities of telekinesis in the body are just through the transfer of the heat from hands. Well, that would be entirely possible, and you, not, you need not actually reject telekinesis as a real effect. The definition of telekinesis is being able to move with your mind objects at a distance, right? Well, presumably there must be a, there would have to be a mechanism by for the thought stream to be able to influence the object. It would not be a direct one-to-one -one relation. Uh, even with global warming, carbon dioxide is not a one-to-one -one relation with global warming uh, intensity. What it is that goes through three steps: absorption of uh, infrared radiation, uh, d uh, deflection of that is heat through vibration. Kinetic molecular theory of gas causing everything else to fully expand, and with the heat rise, then forms the temperature effects and the like that you see in global warming. You know, uh, combined with the, and all the other effects come through the universal gas laws. The same could be happening here with telekinesis. Um, you know, we might have an effect of heat through the hands or some other mechanism. Um, you know, uh, you know, po pro again, probably uh, manipulation of your own uh, of your own bio body's electrical field is what I'm suspecting. You know, uh, forming of static, and uh, and then and then moving a side wheel. You know, um, you know, it, in that context, I could agree with it, and that's the reason I still think we should be researching under controlled conditions um, ESP phenomena, telepathy, precognition. Um, I mean, a lot of these may appear to be, you know, contrary to the known laws of physics, but either there is one of two possibilities on some of these things. One, they could all exist just under a, uh, you know, just they're just caused by or an effect of an already known natural phenomenon like uh, you know like like uh, you know either psychological or physical like say taking in extra um, information that we don't know about already and it's coming up through the subconscious or there might actually be an extra mechanism by which the brain uh, figures out uh, it could be a hypercalculative capability I mean bear in mind that the brain can do high amounts of math capability I mean what if the you know what if the brain through very little information at all could even you know could even hypercalculate beyond chance um, this was one idea for uh, predicting the future that was postulated in uh, Dark Angel, the uh, series that Jessica Alba used to star in. Uh, in one of the episodes in the second season, they had a guy um, who uh, even the other, uh, even the other, um, uh, oh frig, what's their names? Even the other X Fives were skeptical that this guy could predict the future, but he actually could, and he wasn't claiming any psychic powers. He was just simply saying that they had they had actually genetically altered his brain to give him a hyper math capability. So giving him only two to three variables, he would be able to calculate a future with a seventy percent accuracy level. Now um, I'm going to actually go into this in a little bit of greater detail on the uh, in another video, but uh, or I already ha and I already have in some cases. But think about this. Parapsych studies, which, uh, you know, even the best controlled ones up to date, like we have been constantly developing controls and we're still getting statistically significant results overall, as revealed by meta-analyses. And from this, you know, and, and we're still using better statistical techniques and the like in order to be able to do these meta-analyses. We're still getting statistically significant effects of a small of small anomalies that seem to be no more than a few, maybe even 10 or, or more percent above chance. Nowhere near above, fifth, nowhere near above 50, unless it's a one in two uh, test that they're working with. You know, at which point it would be no more than 60%. But you see, the point is it's only like a 10, maybe 20% above chance. Like we're only getting a minute effect size, but we are getting something. So therefore, there's probably a cause for this something. And, you know, regardless of what it is, we should be researching if only to figure out if it's another experimental artifact that we haven't looked into. And if it's not, we should be figuring out what this, what the uh, mechanistic basis of it is. Anyway, that's just my thoughts. As a Fordian skeptic, my whole point about it is may, it may exist, it may not. But rather than us taking it just purely as, an, uh, as, a, as a dilemma, um, I saw an, uh, an argument last night of somebody saying that parapsychology is anti-science because it's constantly just a study of an anomalies and you can't make scientific laws based on exceptions. And I'm going, no, but if you research exceptions, you can start generating theories about how they fit into the existing framework. And so far they haven't been able to do that yet with uh, parapsych, but that's because it's still new in its stage. You know, this is the foremost, uh, uh, um, you know, level of science, uh, you know, uh, a level of research, and we haven't explored every single one of the variables yet. A lot of them we've explained away now, you know, uh, or more specifically, a lot of them we've got found explanations for: trickery, uh, delusion, um, you know, misperception. But not all of them. There's still some anomalies that need to be explained, and that's a good reason to uh, continue research in this area. And that's just simple as that. It could be statistically significant by chance, but it, and it could be another explanation. We have to continue researching.
like the I Am Legend novel, that's my piece.